In this session, we're going to go over the um, Chapter 7 of the BCSC series. It's the Medical Management of Glaucoma. Again, uh, photos outlined in green of courtesy of Dr. Uh, Lee Alward out of the University of Iowa. The red images are from my own. In this case, there are a few black uh, outlined images that I've taken from the internet. The exact source I uh, don't have listed, but they're just generic photographs, presumably from the companies. Medical management is typically the first line of glaucoma, and you can see we have multiple choices for medical options. Okay, It's a decision, really, that one needs to make as to when to treat and how to treat. Primary angle closure glaucoma and primary infantile glaucoma are typically treated at the time of diagnosis. Primary open angle glaucoma is typically treated uh, when there is damage that's occurred or when it's thought that the IOP is high enough that you're going to get damage. Treatment of the glaucoma suspect individual um, is usually limited to those that we feel are at high risk for progression, and everyone's uh, evaluated individually. The goal of medical treatment is to always lower the eye pressure to a level where you don't think there'll be any more damage with the lowest number of possible side effects uh, and the least uh, in position to the patient's life. Uh, in general, you want to set a target pressure for all your glaucoma patients that you should kind of keep in mind to track uh, to make sure that they stay within that general range. Typically, with initial medical management, you try to get a pressure reduction of 20 to 30 percent from baseline. In more advanced disease, you may choose to have a lower target pressure than that, or even more uh, reduction. <coughs> Excuse me. And then you typically have to continue to reevaluate patients to make sure that they remain stable at those target levels. Uh, treatment of secondary glaucoma is often quite similar to primary open angle glaucoma. As mentioned, there are many different medication classes, prostaglandin analogs, alpha agonists, beta blockers, carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, parasympathomimetic agents, as well as combination medicines and uh, hyperosmotics. In the BCSC series, there is a nice chart. You should really have most of this chart uh, dedicated to memory. It is very important. These are good OCAP question sources. Okay. Um, gives you the brand name of the medication as well as the uh, generic name, the side effects, uh, the dosage, method of action, etc. And this is for all of the various medications uh, that we use for glaucoma. Um, I'm not going to go over this chart in detail. It's clearly described in the book or given in the book. Please make sure you review it and uh, you can pause this at any time if you'd like to look at uh, details regarding the graph, but uh, again, it's clearly uh, printed in your OCAP manual or BCSC series. Let's start reviewing some of these medications uh, in a more typical manner. Beta blockers uh, are shown in the photos here. They can typically be uh, broken down into either selective or non-selective beta blockers. Most commonly, we use non-selective beta blockers. That includes cartilol, levobunolol, metoprolol, timoptic, or timolol hemihydrate. Uh, selective beta blockers, there's one available on the market. That's betoptic. It's a beta-1 um, medication and it may actually be safer when you have patients with uh, pulmonary side effects. Its IOP lowering though is typically less than that of the non-selective uh, beta blockers. All uh, beta blockers work by inhibiting uh, cyclic adenosine monophosphate production in the ciliary epithelium which decreases the aqueous production roughly 20 to 50 percent. 
and this can therefore result or cause a reduction in IOP by about 20 to 30 percent. You sometimes do get a contralateral effect even if you use a medication in only one eye due to systemic absorption of the drug. Typically the effects are seen within one hour but the drug may have lingering effects for up to four weeks even after it stops. Beta blockers are typically additive to 